So in this series, what we're going to be doing is learning how to create our own calculator using Python. We're going to be using a library called Ply. Ply is a library for Python that is essentially just an implementation of Lex and Yak, which are two different types of parsing tools that are widely used by people to create compilers. We're going to use it to create a simple calculator that can evaluate simple expressions and we're also going to add support for variables. The reason for this is because eventually we want to create our own programming language using Python because being able to assign variables and evaluate expressions are two of the basic things that every single programming language should be able to do. So the reason we're using Python is because Python's a nice language and it's quite high level which makes implementing complicated things like compilers much easier. Essentially our calculator is a really simple interpreter. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is download Ply. So the way we do that is we just go down here, we click Ply and we click on this and it'll download for us. Now what we want to do is we want to go to our downloads folder and we have this folder here. We want to extract that and we're going to go into that folder. So this folder is the only folder we actually need. We could just copy and paste this into our project, which is here, or we can install it using setup.py. So I'm going to show you how to install it first. So what we want to do is we want to CD into this folder and we want to type python3 setup.py install. So let's just run that. And that should have installed ply for us. If you have any trouble installing it, all you need to do is just copy this ply folder like this and bring it into your project folder like this. But I don't need to do that because as you can see, Ply was just successfully installed. So we're gonna double check that Ply installed successfully. So the way we do that is we say Python 3, and we just launch the interactive Python shell. Then we type import Ply. And you can see, we didn't get any errors, which means Ply has been successfully installed because we were able to import it. So we're gonna exit, and now we're gonna go back to our calc directory. So if I go back to the text editor, you can see this is the calc directory. It has one hidden file, which isn't important, and it has calc.py, which is the file we have here. So the first thing I need to do is import ply, obviously. But what I want to do is instead of just importing ply, I want to say import, I want to say import ply.lex as lex. Then underneath that, I want to say import ply.yak as yak. And then finally, I want to import sys, which is just a standard Python library. The reason we're importing ply like this is because if we just imported ply, every time we wanted to reference lex, uh, we'd have to say ply.lex, but if we just say import ply.lex as lex, we can just reference lex by just saying lex instead of ply.lex, which just makes our code a lot cleaner. So we're just gonna to go to the terminal and we're gonna run this. We're gonna say python3 calc.py, and we shouldn't get any output, but we shouldn't get any errors either. You can see we got no output, but we got no errors implying it worked. So Ply is an implementation of two things. It's an implementation of Lex and an implementation of Yak. What a compiler is made up of is essentially three parts. It has a lexer, a parser, and a code generator or some, for, some way of executing the code that's generated by the parser. What Lex is, is it's a lexer generator. So all we have to do is provide it with some simple information and Lex will create our lexer for us. And then the Yak is the exact same thing. Yak is a parser generator and we provide Yak with a grammar for our language because our calculator is essentially a really simple language and Yak will use that grammar to create a parser. That's why Lex is called a Lexer generator and Yak is called a parser generator. So what Lex does is it tokenizes a string. So this is a really simple math expression and it's something that we're going to be able to evaluate. So essentially the way this will be evaluated is like this. Step one, Lex will take this string and it will tokenize it, which is essentially looking at every character in the string and figuring out what it is. So one is an integer, plus is gonna be a plus token, and two is another integer. So when X sees the string like this, it will produce something like this. So these are the tokens, Some these are something like the tokens Lex would produce. Then Lex will pass these tokens on to the parser, which will check the grammar, and it will see if there's a grammar rule for this. And then what it'll do is create a tree. It probably doesn't make any sense in the minute, but it'll make sense later on in the series. And we will take that tree and we pass it to a special function we're going to write called run. And that run function is going to evaluate the expression by walking the tree that Yak creates. So that might sound complicated, but it's, it's actually a lot more simple and easy to understand than it sounds. So the first thing we need to do is create our tokens. We need to tell Lex what tokens are valid and what tokens aren't. So to do that, what we do is we create a list is equal to an empty list. And within the list, we're going to put some tokens. The first token is going to be int because that is going to be every integer. So for example, if it sees the number one, the number two, the number 10, the number 100, whatever, it's going to see that and Lex is going to work out that as an int. If it sees a number with a decimal point, that's going to be a float. So we need to create a float 
token. We want to create a token called name, and this is going to be variable names. Then we want plus, minus, divide, multiply, and equals, which is going to be our assignment operator, which is how we're going to assign variables. So this list of tokens is what our grammar is going to use to actually figure out whether the grammar rule is correct or not. But what we need to do is tell Lex what an int actually looks like, what a float looks like, and what a plus looks like. So a plus one is easy. So to do that, we say t underscore plus, because it has to match the name of our token. Uh, and t underscore is just, uh, it's a ply thing. So every, anytime it sees t underscore and a variable name or a function name, ply is going to assume that is you telling the Lexer what the token actually looks like. So for simple tokens, we just create a variable, call it t plus, for example. We're going to create a string and we're going to put a backslash and a plus because we want it to recognize a plus as a plus. We're going to copy that and paste it and we're going to change this to a minus. Create a multiply, t underscore multiply. t underscore divide. And t underscore equals. If I was to have, for example, equals and then double equals, if I have to allow comparisons, I would want the double equals to be identified first. Otherwise, ply would see one equals and it would say, oh, that's an equals. And it would ignore the fact that there's a second equals after it. So if I was to have two equals, I would want that second token um, before the first equals. So that the double equals is identified first. So we're going to have to leave it there for this video. In the next video, we're going to be completing our lexer, hopefully, which will allow us to actually see all of the tokens from a string that we provide the lexer. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.